Hey there everyone, and we're back. So just to recap what we looked at in the last lesson, we looked at how key signatures, let me just write this in here, key signatures, are kind of rules to tell us which notes we should be playing in a piece of music. Which notes to play. And if you remember, we did something at the beginning of this piece of music where we wrote in a sharp sign just after the treble clef on this top line of the staff, which is of course an F. And so that was telling us that every F in this piece, unless it has a special instruction next to it to tell us that's not the case, is going to be an F sharp. And so we automatically, so say we saw this note here in the music, let me just draw an F in, we see this note here, this is always going to be an F sharp, even if there's no sign next to it, which we would normally expect to see if it was an F sharp. Now there is actually a pattern to how we write these sharps and flats at the beginning of a piece of music to set the piece's key signature. It's not just something that we do at random, say we want an F sharp and a D sharp and a G sharp to be used in the music rather than the normal F natural, D natural and G natural. We can't just go in and write, say we wanted uh, D, D sharp to be used in the music we put that there. We wanted a G sharp to be used in the music, so we put that there. And also say we wanted an A flat. We can't just go in and mix up writing all these different accidental symbols at the beginning to set our key signature. There are actually a number of established key signatures that we can use, and we have to follow a certain pattern of writing in the sharps and flat signs at the beginning of our music to set our key signature. So as you might have noticed from here, there are some key signatures that use sharps, and there are some key signatures that use flats and actually we even talk about them as being the sharp keys which set patterns of notes that involve using sharps and flat keys which are patterns of notes which involve using flats and in this lesson I'm just going to show you the order that we write those sharps and flats into the music to make our key signatures very straightforward and it might seem a little bit random the way that we do write them in um, but hopefully in the future I will explain why the system came about and how it relates to the system of keys that we use in Western music most of the time. So in the last lesson you'll remember that we wrote this F sharp here into the score and that's actually the first of the established key signatures. We can write different key signatures by adding more and more sharps to the score and that will form all of the sharp keys. We can also start adding flats in the same way and those will form the key signatures for the flat keys. But don't worry too much about that at the moment. This is just to explain how we're going to generally come across these key signatures in the music that we're reading. So that means that F is the first sharp that we generally see when we write down a key signature. That's the first accepted key signature and it's actually the key signature for the key of G and we showed in the last lesson how this particular key mapped on to the notes you'd expect in a G major scale. Now what if we wanted to add another sharp to the key signature? We didn't just want to use F sharps in the music, we also wanted to use C sharps as well. So all we need to do is add in a sharp here, another sharp to our key signature and this is the key signature for D major. I wouldn't worry too much about these, and this will be the last one that I mention. But this would make a nice major sounding scale based on the note D on the piano, or the flute, or any kind of instrument. And so I'm going to keep adding in more and more sharps until we've made a key signature that includes all of the notes being changed from their normal, natural white note cells to the black note accidental cells. So I'm going to ne the next one we add in is a G. So that comes in here. And so that's a key signature that when we play music, we would need to use an F sharp, a C sharp, and a G sharp. And so that's just one of the standard set of key signatures that we can use. We also might continue this by adding in a D sharp. And so this would involve changing four of the notes, F, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp, we'd expect to find in this music. And we can continue the pattern. The next one we expect to find is an A. You'll note that we don't go up to a ledger line here, we go down to the space to write it in. And then some of the slightly weird sharps, like E sharp, which we'd find next. And finally, B sharp. Now, don't worry if you've never heard me talk about an E sharp 
or a B-sharp before. We learnt that if you write a sharp next to a note, you're going to be playing the note a semitone above that particular note, and obviously most of the time that will involve a black note on the piano. But don't forget, there's no black note sitting next to an E on the piano, so how on earth do we play an E-sharp? Well, all we need to do is go one semitone higher, which will be obviously the next note up, which is an F. So uh, E-sharp is actually secretly F, and B-sharp is actually secretly C, but I wouldn't worry about that too much for the moment. And so this is probably the scariest key signature that you're ever going to see in a piece of Western sheet music. But actually, if we break it down, it's very easy to work out what it's telling us. This one is telling us that we need to change every F to an F-sharp, every C in the music to a C-sharp, every G to a G-sharp, every D to a D-sharp, every A to an A-sharp, every E to an E-sharp, or an F, secretly, and every B to a B-sharp, or a C, secretly. And so one really good way to remember the order that these sharps are going to come in key signatures is with a mnemonic. Because actually the sharps always come in exactly the same order. So we'll always see the first sharp that a composer writes into their key signature as being an F sharp. And then they'll follow that with a C sharp and then a G sharp. Even though it's February here in the UK, although actually it's been snowing quite a lot today. Um, I like to use Father Christmas. goes down and empties bag. Father Christmas goes down and empties bag. So with that in mind you'll always be able to very very quickly know which sharps you're going to be playing in a particular piece of music because actually you don't even need to bother to read the read the symbols on the music. So say we were to get rid of these and so say we were presented with this in a piece of music, we don't even have to bother to go through the process of working out what each of these notes are. We could say every good boy deserves fruit, and so there's the F there, or face in the space, F-A-C-E, so this is going to be a C sharp, and then finally this G, which we've learned sits in the space above the top line of the staff. Actually, we don't even need to bother doing that, because if we see there are three sharps in a key signature, we can just use the mnemonic and say, well, look, Father Christmas goes, that's the third one, and so we know in this piece we're going to be using F-sharps, C-sharps, and G-sharps. And so with a bit of practice, you should become very, very adept at knowing which group of notes you're going to be using in each piece you're playing, and that will tell you a lot about the scale, the mood, the character of the piece of music. And so that takes care of the sharp keys. In the next video, I'm just going to finish this off by telling you about the flat keys.